Welcome to the inaugural episode of The Right Focus, a podcast for writers on productivity, process, tools, and craft. This is episode one. You may find two earlier promotional episodes for a book. Those were actually practice podcasts to force me to take this leap. The Right Focus is a production of Writers, Inc. I'm M.A. Lee, here to share what I've learned in my years of writing and teaching writing, as well as my years of publishing. My first books published in 2015, and I haven't looked back since. I write both fiction and nonfiction, and M.A. Lee is just one of my pen names, because, you know, we change, you know, we change names to protect the innocent. The topic for this episode is newbie writer mistakes, and I have seven to share with you. First, a little context. This list of seven, along with the following three not a mistakes, arose from a question that a newbie writer asked on a forum hosted by a national writing. She wanted to know what the published writers wished we had known when we launched our careers. Usually I skip these questions. I don't know why I answered the question this time. I offered encouragement and hoped she avoided a lot of the newbie mistakes that I had made, you know, before I became older and wiser, but still mistake-ridden, still mistake-ridden, Then I admitted to my mistakes, as well as those three not a mistakes, because seven plus three gives me ten. That's a nice round number. I'm sharing my response to her with you, because, well, this is full of lessons on productivity and craft and more. Here's mistake number one. I'm an eclectic reader and writer, so I'm writing in romance and mystery and two types of nonfiction. What I should have done is focus on one genre or series rather than scatter my writing time, which slows down publication. I didn't anticipate that problem. I claimed I was after publication, but I wasn't acting professional about it. I focused my lens too broadly on what I to read rather than what my writing self should create. There's the lesson, and it's called author branding. Before we finish that first manuscript, we need to know what our writing self will be. That writing self will guide the direction of our writing. I'm still too scattered. It's a mistake I continue to make. I have tempered the effect by using three different pen names for my three divergent interests. In the world of 20 to 30 books before discoverability, this greatly slows down my attainment of that goal. Newbie mistake number two. My sales copy didn't intrigue and told too much plot. Okay, let me back up. The sales copy is the description in an online bookstore or on the back of a paperback are the flyleaf of a hardback book. In the publishing world, the book description is often called the blurb. That's the term I learned years ago. Sales copy is a better term. What makes people buy books from writers they don't know? Well, ads and word of mouth. If writers are word of mouth, if writers are looking at books spread out on a table, what will make people pick up a book? The cover first. Cover tells genre. It hints at story or character. It gives the tone of the book. Even browsing an online store, people will see the cover first. Then comes the book description. In my earliest book descriptions, I'm citing parts of the story. But if we writers share too much of the exciting parts, why will the reader then buy the book? People buy books for entertainment. Entertainment is based on surprise and curiosity. My blurbs killed both. Dean Wesley Smith calls it the author problem. When I finished his class on fiction sales copy, I realized how bad all of my original blurbs are. Now I am rewriting every dang one. Look for links to Mr. Smith's blog and his teachable courses in the show notes. Newbie writer mistake number three. I call this one arrogance. That's capital letters, people. I understand letters, people. I understand story structure. I taught it. I taught it from the analytical side and from the writer's side. Therefore, I arrogantly thought I knew how to hook a reader. The class on fiction sales pointed out that my books are actually slow starters. Books should start with that same surprise and curiosity. can do this with great first lines. Others do it with immediate action. Pro writers usually say something like, start the book at the first moment when things become strange. Basically, we should consider the best vivid start for each book. That happens on the first page. Don't bury it three pages in. This is a lesson that I have this is a lesson that I have learned in the past few years and I am trying to apply it now. Newbie mistake number four. Trying to do it the way other people do it. I keep trying to outline when I know. I know it cages my creativity. Writing is fun. 
and writing is hard, I keep looking for ways to make it faster. There is no simpler method than to put one sentence after another. You can dictate to make it faster. A lot of writers use dictation for their sketch of a story, which they then tinker and revise into a manuscript. That's a writing tool you may want to investigate. I use the voice recorder on my phone app for sketching ideas is when I have to. I don't like it because I then have to, to transcribe, and for that, there has to be a better way. I'll be looking for that, and I'll share it with you when I find it, if I do. Transcription is no fun. However, a one-page transcription can turn into six or seven or twelve or more pages of a manuscript. Newbie mistake number five. For several, several years, I looked for a good critique group to help push me to the next level. One day, while I was sitting at a group listening to the, my fellow newbies pick apart a best-selling novel for story structure and character development, I realized I was in the wrong room and was my goal. Why was I listening to people who were not published? The fix was simple. If I wanted to improve my writing, I needed to find veteran writers who were still publishing, not ones who had published one book or three books and then quit. So I found my veterans and I follow them closely. I have writing groups that I mostly. I have writing groups that I also follow on social media, usually as a lurker. I chose those that have multiple writers actively pursuing publication, ones that are inclusive and they welcome indie writers as well as the traditionally published. I avoid the literary fiction groups. My encounters with those have taught me that they I am after. Most merely want you to sit quietly while they read their enlightened drivel and then they want you to applaud politely and gush at the end of it. I hope your encounters with literary fiction groups are better than mine have been. There have to be good ones out there somewhere. Newbie writing mistake number six. Writing mistake number six. In the past, I had nebulous goals about yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily writing. I would say, this month I'm going to work on my novel. But I didn't say how many chapters I would attempt to write or how many pages or words. I didn't consider what development the story would take. I didn't think about or getting off social media and spending an hour each evening at my writing desk. When I started doing that, an hour each evening after work, whether I wrote a couple of sentences or a couple of pages or more, that's when my indie dream started becoming reality. It took a year, but I began to become specific, become specific with my goals. I'm slow, I know. Once I started setting up my plans with specific goals, tinkering was needed to learn how to work with this new method. How long does it take to finish a book? How long is the manuscript going to be? How does that length translate into chapters and pages and words? I break chapters and pages and words into months and weeks and days. That's what you have to figure out. The only way we achieve our goals is to set a specific weekly word count based on daily possibilities. And I need to write every day or I lose impetus. I can write a lot of words or just a, just a few, but I need to know that I'm working for the completion of a manuscript. I still struggle with daily writing. I still get derailed. Last year, though, I wrote over 800,000 words. That's an eight with five zeros. Best year ever. I published five nonfiction titles, three mysteries, and one fantasy novella. Specificity novella. Specificity is not a word, but it creates success. So if you want to avoid that mistake, look at your week ahead with all its planned distractions and disruptions, and then set a realistic word count daily. When you go over that word count, don't consider it part of next day's words. Start over again with the next set of day. Something will happen to throw a spanner in the works, to use a cliche, and so those extra words that you've written will cover that time. Here's the last newbie mistake. We need a drum roll, please. Number seven. Over several years before I started my self-publishing journey, I tinkered with the idea of becoming a full-time of becoming a full-time writer. I would play with a story until it became difficult. Then I would jump to another one. I accumulated a lot of story starts. Eventually, I heard the advice about finishing what you start. If we only write story starts, we never learn to work through the dreaded middle or achieve the climactic ends. I saw all 50 pages of handwritten story. For years, I played with story starts. 
gradually, more manuscripts got finished. Now all of them get finished, although sometimes that's an eventually finished rather than a currently finished. When I'm slogging in the middle of a manuscript, sometimes I take a break to think about an upcoming book. But it's a one-day break, not s- but it's a one-day break, not several days. Then I'm back to the sloggy middle of the manuscript, which means that other story ideas start percolating in my brain. And when I finish this manuscript, another one is ready to be poured onto the page. So, here are those seven mistakes once more. One, figure out your goal as a writer and determine the writer and determine your writing self as you're finishing that first manuscript. Focus on that writing persona rather than scattering your efforts across various genres or series. Two, learn to write sales copy. Remember, it's the second thing that convinces readers to buy your book. The first thing is the cover. I mean, you understand the lesson, apply the lesson. My lesson to apply was starting stories on the first page, not the third page. You may know it, but you may not have heeded the lesson. Four, find the method that works for you. Admit writing is hard. It's also fun, but it's not easy. It is rewarding. Don't force your easy. It is rewarding. Don't force yourself into a working process that doesn't fit you. If the words are not flowing and everything else in life is fine, then the working process may be the problem. Don't cage your creativity peg by forcing it into round holes. Five, pay attention to the advice of published writers and don't be enthralled by the writers on a couple of good sources along with with a couple of welcoming organizations and stick with them. Be specific with your goals. Know what your project will be. This is number six. How many chapters? How many words? How many words can you accomplish in a week, realistically? How do those words translate to chapters? Set your goals for the year, goals for the year, then the season, then the month, then week by week. And number seven, finish what you start, then start the next one. Thank you for joining us in the inaugural episode for The Right Focus. Don't forget to check the show notes. Next time, we'll have three not-a-mistakes 